Good afternoon, you par. Thank you so much for joining us today on this. Uh, well, here it's a beautiful Friday. Hopefully it's a beautiful Friday where you are as well. Uh, my name is Colleen DeLang. I am a trainer for many of the associations across the state. Um, I'm gonna be taking you on a tour today of the Collaboration Center. A little bit about my background is not only uh, my full-time staff here at the MLS, but uh, I've also been an agent myself for the last 22 years, which allows me really to show you some time-saving tips and techniques when using the Collab Center. And so basically, if you're not familiar with Paragon's Collab Center, it's a way that you can set up a search and basically marry it to a contact record like a buyer so they can go ahead and immediately get new homes that show up with their criteria. So um, if you haven't attended a webinar, I see some new names today. So if you haven't attended a webinar with me before, here's a little bit of housekeeping. I try to make them as interactive. I'd love to be standing in front of you, but since I'm not, I want it to be as interactive as possible. So you can type in your questions throughout the demo today. Um, there is in your GoToWebinar panel, which is probably minimized over at the right-hand side of your screen. It's usually an orangish red arrow. If you click on that arrow, you can actually go down that panel and find the questions box. This is really designed to alert me if you have a question. We usually do this in pretty small groups. I think there's only 10 of us on today. So if you do have a question, feel free to drop it in that questions box and I'll go ahead and address it right away. All right, so I'm gonna ask one big favor. Um, I always hate when I uh, do these webinars and I find out two or three minutes in that no one can hear me or can't see me. So if I can just have anyone take a quick second and put in the questions box that you can see and hear me, um, that would be great. There's nothing worse than, like I said, five minutes in, all of a sudden I see somebody can't see or hear us. So if someone could just put a quick, uh, we can see you. Thank you so much, Christy. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, as an agent, I'm going to tell you um, that I empathize with you because I know you've gone through a lot of change with this conversion. So I first I want to apologize for that. Um, there were some things that because of your geography, um, they were basically so different than any of the MLSs that we've onboarded in the past. Um, with our data sharing efforts, we now have 97% of the state in our data share. But what that kind of means is in order for the data share to actually work, those fields have to match up. So, and I have to tell you, I had no idea how impossible that was until 10 years ago when I joined the MLS. Um, basically, when a field is looked at by another MLS, it has to be a field that they're going to recognize and recognize what should be in that field. So that's why the conversion was a little more difficult. And again, I think what really um, intensified that, unfortunately, is the differences in your geography um, as far as bluffs, searching on interior and Great Lakes. So those were things that we added right away when we realized how important they were in your searching. Um, but I apologize. I know it's never fun when you have to go through a change like that. So what I thought I'd do is just before we go into the Collab Center, I thought I would show you some of the benefits you got, because I know that's what I would be wondering as an agent, like I'm going through all this change. What benefit do I see? Um, not only are you seeing properties coast to coast, because let's face it, our buyers um, are now finding information on Zillow and IDX sites, and they're calling us, and they're not always in our exact area that we may have just worked in before. Or maybe you want to see comps in your area and another agent listed grandma's cottage over there. So the idea is you get a lot more data. And now, as I mentioned, uh, through my role source, we now have 97%. So we are literally three MLSs away from having, and by the way, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but we're talking 34 MLSs in the state of Michigan. Um, a little point of clarity why I bring this up is when I started 22 years ago, um, I had to belong to three MLSs, which was painful enough. I had to learn three different MLS platforms. I had to learn Paragon. I had to learn uh, Matrix. I had to learn um, another sort of antiquated system. Um, and I had to put the exact same information for my listings in 
three separate times. And I was constantly getting fined because I would forget to close one over here in this MLS or I'd forget to mark it pending in the other MLS. It was a nightmare because nothing talked to each other. So about 14 years ago now, our CEO said, you know what? You're licensed in the entire state. You should be able to belong to whatever MLS you choose and you should be able to have all the information you need in your home MLS database. And that's kind of how data sharing was born. And it was actually born way before it was a cool thing to do. So I know it's been a lot of change and I do apologize, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little background about why that change is taking place. The other thing I wanted to talk about um, was strictly the new functionality, new features, um, and new tools that you get through this functionality. So I'm just gonna kind of minimize this down here so that you can see more of this. Um, the new tools that you get allow you to not only access, and here's kind of our data sharing footprint at this point. So these are all the different listings for one year that we now bring in through data sharing. We have more MLS than any other, or more uh, data than any other MLS in Michigan and more data shares. Another thing that's important is it allows us to bring you enhancements on a bigger level and products on a bigger level. So UPAR actually just this week, and matter of fact, you're the second group I'm showing this to, so it's brand, brand new. Um, we have upgraded your high resolution photos. Now, I'm going to be honest, when the tech people started telling me numbers like it's 3000 by, I had no idea really what that meant. It was totally lost on me, I'm sorry to say, because I am not super techie when it comes to what those pixels mean and what it's going to do. So I said, hey, so that we can actually talk to realtors about what that means, can you give me an example? Can you give me a photo, show where the other MLSs are? Uh, as far as this resolution, show where we are and where we went to this week. And so that's what I'm showing you. So the photo that you're looking at right now is all the other MLSs in the state. This is the common um, high resolution photo. This is where we currently are, okay? So this is what my role source is offering, what UPAR is offering. So when you're putting in your listings, it automatically will take your great high-res photos and display them on these IDX sites like Zillow and many of the others, your company websites. But now, as of this week, this is the new resolution. So just, I know when, you, when it's a number thing, it didn't make any sense to me, but look how crisp and clear that is. And when buyers are looking on IDX sites and syndication sites and the Clab Center, which we're going to look at today, this is what they are now seeing. So just kind of to recap, this is the average MLS photos. What my role source increased the resolution to, uh, this was a couple years ago. And as of this week, this is that same photo with that resolution. So good stuff coming. So your photos are going to get even more exposure and be even crisper, clearer. And of course, that's never been more important than right now. The other thing it allows us to do is give you tools and deep integration into your MLS. So this, and I apologize, kind of looks like a garbage can, but Brian's been pretty busy backfilling all your information to make sure your searches are working great. But this, what looks like a garbage can, is actually deep linking into BSNA. Now, I know whenever I show this, people um, uh, in the Upper Peninsula, and I spent a lot of time in the Upper Peninsula growing up in, in the Keweenaw. My father had property just uh, outside of Carper Harbor and um, at the beautiful Lake Superior, where every time I would try to put my toes in, it seemed cold. <laughs> Um, but growing up there uh, and spending most of my summers up there, I have to tell you, it is just the most beautiful country. But I know when I'm talking to a lot of uh, UPAR members, one of the common things that I hear is, well, not every municipality or city or township up here uses BSNA. And you're right. And not all of them use it down here either. Um, but more and more of them are now going to the BSNA record. So what this does is instead of me having to go into BSNA, go in to find the municipality, then wait for that to load, then go in and type in the address or the name, wait for that to load to be able to find that property record. Now you really just click a button and it takes you directly to that property record. Now, let me also point out that if there is a fee 
because some of the municipalities, they make money um, on these property records so they can keep them updated and they charge anywhere from $2 to, I think the highest one I've ever seen is four. But if it charges a, a fee, you still have to pay that fee, but you don't have to do all the legwork and all of the work to find that specific property. So it's just designed to allow you to find it faster and more efficiently. These are some of the new great tools that you get though uh, as a UPAR member for going through this type of conversion. Um, the other thing is you also have an upgraded HomeSnap now. Uh, one of the things I love about HomeSnap is it, if you are, let's say, showing a property and your buyer standing next to you says, well, Colleen, what about this evidence of water down here in the basement? Do you, is this like a sub pump thing or you know, is this a, the city flooding that happened last year? It's so nice when you can actually be on your phone in HomeSnap and see the seller's disclosure. Not only can you see it, you can click a button and send it to the buyer standing next to you. Um, and if you're using uh, the ZipForm um, version, we have AuthentiSign here at my real source, but I know ZipForm also has the e-signing program where you can actually sign with your fingertip. You can actually not only just show properties and have all the information, um, but if you're using that mobile version, you can actually write the offer, which I do. I actually write the offer right in the home, especially right now where there's just not enough inventory. I want to be able to say, you know what, let's write it right here so I can get it over to that listing agent. So these are all things that you're getting through this conversion. So I apologize. I know conversions are never easy. And as an agent, I don't like change either, but hopefully you're going to see a lot of new benefits coming through this conversion. Um, one of the other things I want to point out is the single property website. This is a great way to share and showcase your property out onto social media. So with one click, you can click that single property website button. You can quickly share your listing out onto social media. You can even, um, if you have a branded tour, um, meaning that you have contact information, if you have a branded tour in the appropriate place in Paragon, which we're going to talk about in a couple of moments, um, it'll even pull that. So when you're sharing it out onto social media, it's sharing your contact information and more about you. Of course, it's going to show those beautiful gallery style photos. But what I like about the single property website is that it only showcases you and your other listings. So many times I still see agents that are sharing from IDX sites. And unfortunately, you're taking great photos. You're writing all of these comments and descriptions. Then you're sharing them on some IDX site where you've now just given that lead away to whoever bought the zip code. The nice thing is when you're sharing through the single property website, it shows your other actives your other pendings, and 90 days worth of your closed sales. So if you just got a seller, let's say you just uh, got them 10 grand more than asking, and um, you sold in you know seven days or something like that, you might want to broadcast that story on social media. You might want to share that to Facebook and say, you know, here's what my happy seller uh, received for his home. It was X amount over asking. All of those are your success stories. So we want you to be able to share those using the single property website. The single property website, you do not have to do one thing all you have to do is put your listing into Paragon. You will receive an email within about 30 minutes letting you know that it's ready to share and it's right on the listing ticket as I showed you right here under this little check that you see. So you can go right to the listing ticket or you can share it right from your email. Then you can share it onto social media so that everyone is seeing your listing. But again, the only contact information they're seeing is for you, the agent. So they're not seeing other brokerages and other advertising. Okay, so with that, now I'm going to take you into what we're here for. Just kind of wanted to give you a, a quick overview of some of the new great tools that UPAR is bringing to you as a member benefit. Um, all of the things I'm showing you, by the way, I received a few emails like, do I have to subscribe for these things or is there an additional fee? And the answer is no. These are all the great tools that UPAR has negotiated to give their members. Um, so let's talk about the one uh, that I really use quite often, and that is the Collaboration Center. The Collaboration Center is really set up so that you can basically set up a search 
marry that search to a contact and they will automatically get any new prospects or any new listings that match their criteria. I kind of teach this class backwards of everyone else at the MLS because I kind of like to show you what the Collab Center looks like first and how it works. And then I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to set it up for your clients. So I'm going to, again, kind of teach it backwards. I think the number one thing um, that confuses people about the Collab Center is through all of the classes, if you've taken other classes with me before, with all of the other classes, I've said resources is your toolbox, right? Where you're going to find all your tools. So people will call and they'll say, well, Colleen, where is that Collab Center tool? And I think that's why more people don't use the Collab Center, quite honestly. And the, the simple thing of the Collab Center is it's so easy. There really isn't a button. It's a saved search. That's really what it is. So there is no Collab Center button. It is a saved search that you're just marrying to a contact. So let's take a look at the Collab Center. And then um, again, I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to create exactly what I'm doing. All right. So first, how do you, the agent, access the Collab Center? Because there is no button under resources, as I mentioned. Really, where you're accessing everything, where you're seeing client favorites, where you're seeing all this great stuff is under your contacts because that's really the search is assigned to a contact. So when I'm ready to see what they like, what they favorite, um, what they don't like, um, or see if they wanna see a particular property, I go right to my contacts and view or manage my contacts. That's really where you're accessing this all from. Now, there's a bunch of very cool tools in here, and I'm going to show you a few of my favorites. I'm going to show you showing time carts. I'm also going to show you the agent preview and the agent recommend it. So I'm going to go over all of those. But let's pretend for just a moment um, that my attendee list here. Let's pretend for a moment that uh, uh, Daniel, who's on our call today, he um, is working with a buyer. The buyer said to him no less than 10 times, I want to live in this particular city. Maybe they want to live in Houghton or maybe they want to live in a particular city. And Daniel realizes that one street over is the home that he thinks would be absolutely perfect. Now, it's not in the city that they specify. And to be totally honest, I've had this happen. Um, I had a first time home buying company, uh, home buying couple. They said no less than 20 times. We only want to live in St. Clair Shores, Colleen. We only want to live in St. Clair Shores. Don't even show us houses outside the St. Clair Shores, right? So you set up their search and you include the city of St. Clair Shores because that's where they told you they want to live. But now there's very low inventory. So we know sometimes they have to go outside of the circle, maybe that they were originally looking at. So one of my good friends uh, from Real Estate One, she's a manager over here, been in, in real estate almost as long as I have, I think about 20 years. She listed a house one street over out of St. Clair Shores. And sure enough, I saw the picture the day she listed. She was telling me about it at, we were at, at breakfast. She was telling me about it. I knew it was the perfect home for them. You can actually go in to their collab center and you can do an agent recommended, which literally when they log in, pops up a home and says your agent recommends that you look at this. Sure enough, as soon as they saw the photos, we went and looked at it. We wrote the offer standing right there and that was the home we closed on. Thankfully enough, sometimes what our buyers are looking for, sometimes we as agents know that you know, we just walk into one of those situations where we know it's perfect for them. So we can recommend something that maybe didn't fall exactly in their criteria. So um, then then there are those, I'm going to say, challenging buyers. And I don't know if it's kind of the crazy hair or what. I, I seem to have my share of really challenging buyers lately. Um, so I had a referral of a really great lady. We closed on her home, really, really nice. She sent me a referral and um, the this person, I set them up with the Collab Center and she literally called me and she said, Colleen, if you send me one more yellow-sided home, I'm gonna find a different agent. And 
And well, first of all, I did not know she didn't like yellow siding. And second of all, there is no button in the MLS to say remove yellow sided homes, right? So you can actually do an agent preview, which is actually kind of what you see right here where it says needs approval, where it sends it to you to review as the agent. And then you can decide what, in fact, you want to go to the client and if there's something you don't. So if it's a scenario like that where they absolutely do not want to see a yellow sided home, you can actually make sure that you're previewing them first and then you can hit approve them. You can approve all and it will obviously go right over to that buyer. So there's some really cool things that are built in here. One of the things that you can see right away is when we actually added them to the collab center. We can also see when they last logged in. They can all, you can also see when their last notification was sent to them. You can see how many they've marked as possible, rejected. You can see all of these from right here. But let's take a look at what their Collab Center looks like. So I'm just gonna go into their site by clicking the View button. And this is gonna show me exactly what they're seeing. Now, of course, I'm seeing it right through my contacts, but they actually have a site where they can go in and leave notes. By the way, if they're uh, maybe they're business partners, maybe it's a husband and wife, uh, maybe it's multiple people looking to buy a home, you can actually uh, allow multiple people to log in and get these notifications. They can share notes. So, you know, a husband and wife or partners can actually go in and they can um, actually create folders of things that they like. So there's some really cool things in here. But let's actually take a look at this. So this one, um, it's actually for my grandfather. Um, and he is looking for a traditional brick home. So when a new property comes onto the market or if it has a price change and now it falls into his criteria, it's it sends him an email. He can literally click to go right into his collab center and he can, of course, see all the details. If he likes the home, he can favorite it by simply clicking on the heart. If he wants to flag it as a possible, maybe he wants to wait for uh, you know, his wife to look at it, he can do that. He can reject it. He can create a custom folder. So maybe he's got a vacant land search and a residential search, he can do that. Um, and you can even compare two listings side by side. But if he's looking at this home and he wants more detail, he's gonna click on this view detail button. And that's gonna take him into where he can see all the information on this particular listing, but it does some cool stuff. So I want to talk about that. Um, of course, they can see the photos, blow them up, you know, do the gallery view like you can in most any program these days. Uh, it's got that clear, simple view that they're used to. How many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, remarks from the MLS. Of course, um, one of the big things is buyers want to know what are the room sizes? What are the taxes? So all of that is captured here as well and the property history is listed. So they can go through all of that information. Looks like a long property history. I think I picked the wrong one on that one. They can see community reports. They can actually use a mortgage payment calculator. So maybe they wanna estimate what the payment uh, for this particular property would be. They can do that. If I go up here to the top, they can ask a question that comes directly to your email so that you can address it. But here's the one I love. If they have favorited the house, that obviously means that there's interest. Right now, we even though I know it's a it's a changing market, we're all aware of that. There's some you know crazy things going on in the background, but we still have a lot of buyers who have not found homes and they've been looking for a long time. So if I know that he's already favorited this home, he can also go into the request a showing time. Instead of me seeing that it got favorited, now I have to pick up the phone and I have to call him and say, okay, what time are you available? And he, then he usually says something like, okay, well, I gotta call the missus and let me find out what her schedule is, I'll call you back. They can actually just put in a requested showing time right here, which is going to email me the time that they wanna see this particular home. So pretty easy. What I encourage my clients to do is to go in and to favorite any home that they want to see. So again, we're going to get them to click on that favorite because that alerts you via email as the agent that there's a home that they want to see. 
again, just kind of going through it. They can request a showing time without me having to call them. They can see the rooms. So here's our room measurements again. It's a 10 by 12 bedroom on the first floor. It has carpet. All of that is here. As I scroll down, if there's an HOA fee, they can see that. But this is my favorite part. They also now can see the seller's disclosures and the lead-based paint disclosures. So if they have questions about a home, now that's great, but really what I like about this is we've encouraged all the members in our area to add in the bylaws, like the master deed and bylaws, um, the rules and regs. So if you're showing a condo, do you know how nice it is when they can actually see that they can have pets? Um, they can have two dogs, maybe there's a size uh, restriction. Um, or they can't have pets even more. You know, they've got a dog and they want to know, is this a place they could live? This is really nice when they can actually see it right from their collaboration center. Of course, um, up at the top, they can also do a street view, which literally allows them to walk down the street. They can see the, in this case, I can see a garbage can laying there. <laughs> but I can also see the home to the left. I can see the home to the right, and I can literally walk down the neighborhood. Now, I can do this as the agent, but your buyers love it when they can actually view a neighbor, especially if they're looking to move, you know, an hour or two away. It's really nice when they can actually just walk down the street doing that Google Street View and check out the neighborhood right from their computer or their phone. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is if you can get your i'm just going to grab a couple of these if you can get your clients to favorite things i will show you um and some of these have gone pending so i'm going to just take a few of these out um, if you can get your clients to click that favorite button one of my favorite features is how easy it is to set up the showings so again, if you can get them to click the favorite button, and especially if you can get them to um, let you know when they wanna see it, with one click, you can set up all of these properties in a showing time cart. Now, I don't know if you've ever used showing time carts, but I think it is truly one of the best things since sliced bread. Um, and I will tell you, I was privileged enough to see some information um, about a month ago of the new showing time system. It's getting a kind of a top down um, renovation where you're going to be able to do even more through the app. It's going to have a new um, UI, which is going to be even more uh, user friendly. But let me show you why I like how Showing Time works with the Collab Center. So I've seen that my client has gone in and he's favorited some properties. It's going to, of course, alert me as the agent that there are properties he favorited. And remember, I'll also see the time if you can get them to select that. Now, instead of me going in and trying to find appointments for each one of these houses separately using the showing time link. What if I told you you could just check them off, go up to this actions plug, and hit the showing time button, which will pull all of those properties into a showing time cart. So I'm gonna build my showing time cart, and I'm gonna say I wanna show these on Sunday. And it's going to ask you, well, who do you want to show them to? Um, you, I put in a bunch of fictitious names but you, uh, early on. Um, the only person who can actually see your buyer's name or who you're showing the properties to is you and your broker. Um, when this first came out, I was like, I am never putting my buyer's name. What if the listing agent sees it? Or what if they know that person? But I promise you, we tested it in a million different ways. The only person who can see your buyer's name is you and your broker because your broker has an overview uh, panel. But basically, if I'm saying I'm going to show these to Barry Buyer on Sunday, what it's going to do is it's going to drop them all into my showing time cart, but it does some cool stuff. So if I scroll down here, I can see that with especially with the price of gas, I would not want to use this route. Look, I start over here. I'm down over here. I'm like now going over here. I'm like driving all over the city. And I don't know how gas is in the UP, but right now it's pretty expensive where I am. Pretty sure it's probably the same up there. Um, I don't want to use this route. I want to put them in a smart route, which is going to allow me to determine what is the best or logical route that these properties should be put in 
so that it makes sense. So this certainly makes a whole lot more sense by going this route. Now, the next thing I wanna do um, is I wanna go up here and I wanna see, is it a go and show or is it going to actually require an appointment? So let's say we're gonna use uh, Cindy for this. So Cindy's showing these properties and she's just got the call and she's scheduling it really fast. Maybe she's just going to show two properties fast. Well, if you're going to meet up right away and she's walking out the door, you probably want to start at your go and show, right? Because a go and show means you're immediately getting the lockbox where an appointment required. Well, I don't want to be standing on the porch with my buyer if uh, it's got to go to a seller or a listing agent and maybe they're not checking their, you know, their uh, voicemail. And they don't know we're requesting a showing and now we're waiting around. The other thing I want to do so I can kind of use that in my scheduling process. The other thing I want to do is because you guys cover such a huge area, I also want to make sure that I'm giving myself enough time. And the reason I say this is I see a lot of central locks up in uh, the UP. Um, we use central lock and master lock down here. And so a lot of agents, because of the amount of showings, are shortening up those showing windows. I have a lot of friends who are leaving it to 15 or 30 minutes as their appointment window. So the thing is, if you're using an electronic lockbox, you got to know how long it's going to take to get from point A to point B, because many of these lockboxes have a 15 minute window, like master lock that we use and, and central lock, um, as long as you've set it that way. So again, that 15 minute appointment window, if I'm going to be driving 30 minutes from property A to property B, well, I certainly want to figure that out because I want to build that into my appointment window. So in this case, I can see it's going to take me only six minutes to drive from property A to property B. So now I can go in and just pick my times. So if it is a central lock lockbox, if they have a central lock on the property, you're going to see it's going to ask you, do you have access to central lock? That's what when you add a listing in and you put that it has a central lock, this is automatically done behind the scenes. So I'm going to say, yes, I have access. And I'm going to say that I want to show this Sunday from 1030 to 1045. Okay, so here's my appointment. Now, the other thing it's going to allow me to do is if there is another showing and the agent doesn't allow overlapping showings, or as you can see down here, let me scroll down a little bit, you can see down here, they have sometimes blocked off. So this allows me to schedule all on one view so it's not so confusing. So I know it's going to only take me six minutes. I'm going to be done here uh, at 1045. You can see this agent did use a 15 minute appointment window. So I know that probably 11 o'clock is going to be a good bet for my second appointment. This one does not have a central lock. As you can see, it's not asking me that question. And I'm going to say, so we're going to do 11 o'clock. Maybe I want to make this to 1130, another half hour window we're seeing here. So it allows me to view everything and then send all the requests at one time. Now, let's say you don't really you're looking at this uh, this route here. Maybe you want to start from your house or maybe you want to reverse the order. You want to start with the number seven first. Well, you can actually click address and you can revert them. You can also, a lot of people don't know this, you can drag and drop these into place too. So if you wanna move guy to number three instead of number two, so you have two go and shows a little more time, you can actually do that. Just grab the bar and you're gonna move them into the order that you want. Uh, if you wanted to start from your home, you can click on add another stop. You can put in the address of your home and make that the first place that you're starting from. If you are, let's say Cindy is taking some people out for relocation and she's going to take them to a restaurant as well. Um, she can actually add the restaurant in. Maybe she wants to make that the fourth or fifth stop. But the nice thing about doing that is when you are all done, you can actually send your buyer turn by turn directions. You can send it right to their phone. They can then navigate using Google Maps or they can use um, iMaps and they can actually navigate from property one to property two to property three. 
what I love is that it also eliminates which one we're going to see next, which one we see in first, where are we going to start again? Because it's right on their phone. It's actually going to create that. Once you've got all of your appointments scheduled, you're going to hit send requests. And now those are going to start being confirmed. I'm going to immediately get my going shows and we're ready to go. So I'm a huge fan. Um, again, if you get the challenging buyers, as I mentioned, I seem to, I seem to specialize in that. You got your whole tour all set. You're ready to go. You're walking out the door and they say, great news, Colleen. We found two more listings. Well, don't worry. You can click the add listing stop and add other listings to your tour. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you um, just joined us a little bit late, we had a couple of people pop in. Remember, you can ask questions throughout the demonstration. You're just going to put them right in that questions box right within GoToWebinar, um, and that will alert me you have a question and we can go ahead and address it, okay? All right, so that is the ease, and let me just kind of recap. I pulled all of these in right from my contacts, so I had my buyer go in. My buyer has favorited eight. I literally click on that number eight. It then puts them in this view, I'm checking it off and I'm going up to this plug where it says actions and this is how we create our showing time cart. All right, so hopefully you've got a little taste of what the Collab Center is. Again, the Collab Center is really just taking a search and marrying it to a contact. Of course, you're gonna find that under contacts. And when you're ready to see their site, you can see that, you can add more information, you can even add more searches. Or again, you can go in and you can approve things before they get them or even do an agent recommended. So hopefully you kind of get an idea of what the Collab Center is. And now I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how to set that up for your clients. All right. Okay, so when you get a chance, can you show me how to set it up so that when an agent uh, chooses whether or not, um, yes, the approval part, absolutely. I will show you that. Um, so I have I used this one for quite a while, but usually you'll have, you know, five or ten that need approving. Um, if you wanted to approve them all, you could click on approve all. And I'm going to show you how to actually build this in. So don't worry. I know I'm kind of jumping ahead. But if you wanted to go one by one, you could actually click on that number. In this case, I have a huge amount. And you could say, you know what, I'm going to approve these two for that client to see. So I'm just maybe maybe the other ones that, you know, you don't think would be interesting to them. I'm going to go ahead and check them off and hit approve. You could check them off and just remove them. So disapprove. I don't want them to see them at all, um, but you want to get them out of that list. So you can actually go in or you, again, could even approve all right here. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so again, you can, I'll show you how to set it up because I'm sure that's probably where your question is. Um, but you can do approve all which allows everything to go to them, or you can simply click on that number that's needing the approval. And you can either, if I wanted to maybe, um, I'm gonna just take these three out. I'm going to disapprove all but those three. It's going to now take them out of that list so I don't have to see that big number any longer. And then if I wanted to approve just certain ones, like maybe I just wanted to approve those three, now I can approve them and they are gonna go directly to my buyer. Okay, so hopefully hopefully that helped a little bit. But now you're probably thinking, okay, well, looks good. How do we do it? And it literally is just creating a search. So let's go ahead and do that. So just like if you were searching for comps or you were doing a traditional search, you're gonna go into Paragon and you're gonna find what you're searching for. So I'm gonna go under search. And of course, this is where you can search by single family or residential, uh, manufactured, vacant land, uh, commercial, multifamily, multi-class. And this is kind of a, I don't always use this, but every once in a while, this multi-class comes in handy every once in a while. Um, if you maybe have a client who says, you know what, uh, Daniel, if you find me a really good fixer upper, that'd be great. But I'd also look at vacant land. Well, now it kind of covers single family and vacant land. So if you are looking to set up one search that would actually cover both of those classes, that's what the multi-class search is. But in this case, let's go into um, our single family. 
because we've added a lot of fields, some is as recent as this morning, as a matter of fact. So there's a lot of new fields and a lot of features. And I know that this is always challenging because it's changed from what you did before. So we're going to address some of those changes in the class, too, as we're setting up our search. So the first thing is, what type of home? Now, there's been some question on, well, what if they don't want to see condos? They just want single family homes. Well, just click on that magnifying glass and then you would just select single family home. So no condos or farms would show up. Status. So I'm going to select um, Actus. Now, I have to be honest, I am not a fan of um, some of the new statuses that have come out. Um, such as accepting backup offers, because let me kind of explain. We as agents, we, according to license law, we have to present all offers. So guess what? We always accepted backup offers, but that's not why I don't really like them. I don't really like them because they're pretending to be active to the public. And really, when you're accepting a backup, that means there is an offer that's already been signed. So if you're going to allow your buyers to see the ABOs, you might just want to remind them that ABO means that right now there is an accepted offer in play. Uh, it could fall through, you know, maybe they're not comfortable with the financing or something of those, you know, of that nature. So they wanted to keep it in ABO, but it's just nice when you sort of give your buyers a heads up that that's what it means and you know, as well as coming soon. So in this case, I am going to say, I'm going to show them everything that's going to be active. And now I'm gonna go down here and do I want them to see rentals or just things that are for sale? So I'm just gonna cover a couple of these because I wanna really get into features. As I scroll down, one of the things that I hear a lot from UPAR members is because, think of it this way, um, before you saw all the great UPAR data, right? But remember, we talked about in the beginning of our demo, how you're seeing so much more data. And that's why you're going through all of this, right? Because now I'm just going to jump over our picture again. You're seeing a lot more listings because again, 97% of the state is through the My Real Source data sharing. We're, we're currently three out of 34 MLSs short of having, you know, all of the data in the state of Michigan, which is exciting. Um, but the idea is sometimes that brings challenges when you're searching. So I'm going to show you a quick tip that no one ever showed me and it drove me crazy. So hopefully you'll uh, find some benefit for this as well. Uh, a good example in my area, and I'm going to use an example in your area, an example in mine. I just kind of want to go through it so you understand it. Um, when I go to area, if I type in something like Clinton Township, there are five Clinton Townships in the state of Michigan. Can you believe that? How do I know which is the Clinton Township that I'm looking for? right? Because if you pick the wrong one, your buyer isn't going to see any properties. So how do I know what is the right Clinton Township? That kind of always bothered me. So um, then I learned the trick. When you're typing in a city like Clinton Township or like Houghton, the first two numbers that you see here are actually FIPS county identifiers. And that means it identifies what county, but how do you know what county that is, right? Five zero could be anywhere. We don't memorize, you know, uh, 83 different counties, right? So if you go up to the county field and you were to type in, in my example, Macomb County, I can see that it starts with a five zero. So when I am searching for the Clinton Township in Macomb County by me, I know this is going to be the one I want because it starts with a five zero. Let's do that same example with Houghton. So if you are looking for the Houghton, and as you can see, there's four different Houghtons here. If you're looking for Houghton, but you want the Houghton that is in Houghton County, if I go to the county and I start typing in Houghton, I can see it starts with 31. So if I am looking for the Houghton in Houghton County, I know this is the one that I'm going to want. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, that seems like a lot of work. Well, you're right, but here's a little trick. If you are really just doing business in one or two counties up there, you can even save the counties in here. Um, so good example. So if I, and I mainly sell in Macomb, Wayne and Oakland County. So I actually, in my real life searches, I have that saved in there. 
if I click on Macomb County and I entered it into that field, when I go to the area and I start typing in Clinton Township, look what happens now. I only get one Clinton Township. The only Clinton Township I'm going to get is for that county. So again, if you are, same concept for you, if you are only looking for the Houghton in Houghton County, well, just add the county in. Now you're only going to see that option. Okay, so it's just a quick tip. Here's another cool thing. And again, these are things that no one ever taught me that I thought if I ever were to teach this class, I would show people this because this is way, way easier. Um, as we identified in Houghton, the county starts with 31, okay? But what if uh, Cindy is, she has a buyer, and they said, you know what, Cindy, we want to see everything in Houghton County, but, you know, with three bedrooms and two bathrooms and this square footage, but we don't like these three cities, okay? So you do not want to have to go in, and I don't know exactly how many cities are in Houghton, I apologize, but you don't want to have to go in and put in, you know, one city, and then the next city, and then, the, I mean, that is a painful process, right? I'm going through and I'm typing in city after city. If you've got 30 or 40 cities in a county, that is just, that would be maddening. You also don't want to just put in the county and then all of a sudden have to take all these listings out or approve them first, right? Because that's a nightmare too. So here's your next tip. Simply go over to the magnifying glass to the right, okay? Your little, this is a, a kind of a secret tip. Not many people know this. You're going to go up to the field. If I'm looking for all the cities in Houghton, I'm going to do 31 because I know that that's the identifier for Houghton. And I'm going to do begins with. Okay. So I'm going to do 31, begins with, and enter. This now is going to give me all of the cities in Houghton County. If I want, if I'm going to use the example with Cindy, if Cindy's buyer said, okay, we want everything except for Calumet um, and Lake Linden, instead of typing in the other, what is this, 21 results, 21 different cities, what if I told you you could add them all in and just take out the one or two they weren't interested in? Okay, so hopefully that made sense because for the longest time, I got to be honest, I thought, whoo, there must be a better way to do this. <laughs> By the way, if you want to clear it out, you can always just click over here on the X. It's going to wipe it all out for you. So keep in mind, if you're looking to search a big area and you don't want to have to type it all in, just type in that identifier, begins with, and then hit enter. It now is going to show you all of the Houghton County cities. If you want to add them in quickly, maybe just take out one or two or three. It's that easy. So a lot easier than um, having to type in the 21 that we selected. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Again, if you want to remove them, if you didn't mean to add them in, you can always go right to your X and pull them out. All right, going down. So structure style, we've added a lot of different structure styles, um, architectural styles. Matter of fact, uh, just today, uh, we are adding, um, what was it, cap, um, not cap, camp and block um, for uh, different architectural styles. So you're going to see more and more are coming. We're going to talk about structure style, architectural styles. Basically, structure style, if you click on the magnifying glass to the right, it's really identifying how many levels. Is it a ranch? Is it a one-story, a two-story? Is it a second-floor condo? Is it a tri-level? So that's really what a structure style is, is kind of think of it more like the levels, if you will. Um, architectural style, that's, you know, more in describing, is it a salt box? Is it, um, you know, is it an A-frame home? Is it a, so it kind of gives you, you know, is it a log cabin? And those are, those are good examples of that. So as I scroll down, um, there are, of course, basement, yes, no. Now, when we first went, started going through this conversion, I got a call from a very, very nice lady. And she said, well, Colleen, in our old system, I liked it better because I could put basement and it had a lot more detail. 
And the good news is you have that detail still, and you actually have more features that you can search on than you did previously, but it's in a different spot. And I think that's what can be confusing. Just like with Waterfront, um, and I apologize, we, we should have had this done uh, really at the conversion, but we did not um, anticipate how many searches were done on the Great Lake and on Interior Lake. So we have it where, you know, you could check it off. But for you guys, that is a huge function. Um, so that is still there, but it's in a different spot. So allow me to show you. So of course you can still put basement, yes or no, right? So I'm gonna put yes, I'm looking for a home with a basement. But what if Cindy's clients only want to see a finished basement? So yeah, I have garage, yes, no. But what if they only wanna see a three car garage? That's really where the heart of the change, I think, is. And that comes into play with the features. So features, if you haven't used them, here's how features work. Must have, must not have, or must have at least one of these items for it to go automatically to my buyer. So in the case of must have, maybe it's a situation where it must have an in-ground pool. Okay, so maybe you have a client who says, uh, must have an in-ground pool must have a finished basement for the buyer to want to consider it. Then there's those that are must not have. Um, I have a client who we just closed on her home. She found out because we have a pass and fail septic ordinance where we are, um, every septic um, and well has to be tested before it can be conveyed um, at closing. So uh, basically, sadly, her septic failed and she was going to have to spend $17,000 to put in a new raised engineered septic field. Um, and uh, it was kind of a long, terrible story. But when she called me to buy her house, she said, you know what? Don't ever show me a house on a septic. I don't want to maintain it. I don't want to know anything about it. I don't want to see anything on a septic field. So you can actually say, okay, must not have a septic. Anything that has a septic, which is a required field, by the way, um, you know, what type of water and what type of sewage, um, that is required in the MLS. So anything that had a septic did not go to her automatically. Um, and you could even set it up so you could approve that if you wanted to. All right, so the next one, must have at least one of these. So this is a good example of maybe he doesn't care if he's on lakefront or has river access. So as long as it has one of those so he can get his boat out to the lake, that's all he really cares about. But you're probably thinking, well, how do we know what these features are. Well, here's your next tip. If you go over here to that magnifying glass I keep referencing, we've actually broken them down into categories, but you have a lot more categories than you did before. So for instance, let's use that example of Cindy's working with the buyer. The buyer said, Cindy, only show me homes with a finished basement. We need that extra living space. I can select must have a finished basement, as you can see right here, now that buyer in their collab center is only going to see things that the agent has selected has a finished basement. Okay, um, let's use some really good examples uh, for you guys. One of them, basically, and I'm going to be honest, we added all of these at the bottom were really added for UPAR. So they are specific to you. Supplemental heat, shoreline. This was a great one. Um, adding in things like bluffs. Flat rock, lawn, uh, mowed, uh, lawn mixed, pebble, rocky, sand, uh, vegetation, wooded. Um, those were added for you guys, as well as the occupancy codes that you guys used to use. Owner occupied, tenant occupied, vacant. Does it have a UPAR lockbox? So these were things that even though they're seen in data sharing, we have added them specifically for you because they were fields that you were used to. Um, one I want to point out is utilities. This was a really big one. We spent a lot of time working on this. Um, electric at, we down here, most everything has electric. So we underestimated the value of electric at street, electric at home, electric connected, electric not available. But we understand now that you have properties like that up there. So those are added. They're just under utilities. Um, there is also, the water features. This is going to be a really big one. I probably get a call uh, every week on this one. This is that, how do I search on the Great Lake? Must be on the Great Lake. 
must be on an interior lake or must be on either one of those um, in order to must have at least one of those options in order for it to go to my client. So again, these are, and you're going to notice not only do you have Great Lake and Interior Lake, but you have some that you may not have seen before, like Sandy Bottom, uh, Shared Waterfront, Common to Waterfront, Common to Waterfront. Actually, I'd never heard of that, to be totally honest. Um, but up in the Sugar Springs community, which is the Claire Gladwin community, it's a big resort town, they have a lot of properties where it looks like your property goes right down to the beach. But actually, it's it's a common area, and anyone can use that. Um, you'll see things like no gas motors, no wake lakes, um, things with a sea, uh, a sea wall, um, river frontage, pond frontage lake frontage, creek, brook, or stream, canal. So all of those, and you'll have even more options to search on than you did previously. Another one I seem to get questions about are, um, and I actually have someone right now that is, he, he, although he can afford it, he's very particular on how he buys properties. He only wants to see things that the seller would consider land contract terms. So if you want to know, is there a seller who's got, you know, who's offering land contract terms, you can actually even set up a search for, okay, must be a land contract. Or maybe um, I had someone who was approved for an FHA 203K loan, but it had to be that. So there's even ways that you can search on financing types. Um, so just, just helpful information. Again, garage, maybe you want to just see attached garages. Maybe they don't want anything that's detached. They only want attached garages. You can actually search that way. Um, so keep in mind, again, really easy uh, ways to add even more detail to your searching, and that's gonna be under features. Lastly, you're probably looking right now and you're probably saying, well, holy cow, that's 12,000 properties. But remember, we didn't put in the most important rule of real estate, right? And that is location, location, location. So I'm going to say Cindy's buyer is looking for between two and three bedrooms. Um, they're looking for one and a half, at least one and a half baths. So we're going to do one to two. They would like at least a thousand square feet. So I'm going to go down to square footage and put that in. Maybe they're looking for at least a two car garage, maybe a three car garage. You're gonna fill in all of that criteria. But the most important part of our search is where exactly is your buyer looking? So I showed you how you can put in a county. I showed you how you can put in an area. But what if there is a huge area, but they want to exclude some of that area? Maybe it's not really so much excluding a city, but maybe if they don't like anything south of 12 mile or they don't like anything east of Copper Harbor. Um, so it, let's let's actually go in and let's take a look at that. We're going to do that by search by map. A lot of people get really nervous when it comes to these map searches. I promise you. Um, that the more you use them, the easier they become. Now, first and foremost, it always takes your map to your office location, okay? So what we know when we set up your account is what UPAR sends to us, and that is where your office is located. So that's where your map opens up to. But don't be afraid. Now, I'm going to be honest, every time I start moving my map around with my, because I have a touch screen, I start moving around with my fingers, all of a sudden I'm like looking at another continent and going, how did I get, you know, why am I looking at Africa? Why did I just, I don't know, I'm just good like that, I guess. So an easier way to use your map search is to just go up to this specific field here. You could type in an actual address. You could type in a city. Um, when I am looking for closed comps, when I'm doing a CMA, I will literally type in the address, comma, a city, hit the magnifying glass, and it takes me directly to the property that I'm looking for comps for. So you can be very, very specific, I guess, is what I'm trying to say here. Um, let's say that they, let's pretend you use their work address. Maybe they don't want to live more than five miles from work. You could do a radius search. So I'm just gonna use one just to keep it all on the same page. I could do a one mile radius search, which now shows me 
all of the actives, because that's what I'm looking for, for the spire, and I can actually go through them. I can click right on the flags to see them, or if they're close together, you'll see it's actually kind of um, stacked here because there's two of them. It puts that little cluster, if you will, because the flags are very close in proximity. But let's say you started this and there's not a lot of inventory where you're looking. Well, great news is you can click the edit. You can click the, the middle of the bar here and you could start dragging it out a little further to see if you could find some additional properties if there's not a lot of listings. And as you can see, we did. Um, so you can actually draw a sh um, that shape and you can even expand it if you weren't finding enough. This is really helpful in comps especially. But now let's take another example. And I did not know this and I always promised that everything I didn't know that I bumped my head on for a long time, I would include in my classes. So here's another little tip. So let's pretend for a moment that they really like this whole city or whole county that I've drawn out here. However, there's this little area down here that they're not interested in. Did you know you can draw a shape on a shape and exclude an area? So if you did a whole city, and let's say that they are very unimpressed with this area over by the Clinton River here. I'm just going to kind of draw it out. So they're going to say, you know what, okay, you know, we really like this county, but there's this one area of the county that we really don't like. You can draw a shape on a shape. Now you're probably thinking, lady with the fuzzy hair, that just made a bigger shape. Well, one more step. You're going to go to that blue um, check mark that says include, and you're simply going to exclude it. Do you see what happened? Those two comps that were in that area are now not going to go to my buyer, basically removed anything that would show up in that area. You can have up to 10 shapes on your map. So let's pretend Cindy has um, a buyer and that buyer says, you know what, Cindy, I really like uh, this 18 mile area here, I, but I, I don't want to go north of Canal. So Cindy can say, okay, no problem. We're going to draw. I like the polygon, but there's a bunch of different drawing tools. So we're going to say, okay, they don't want to go west of Hayes. They don't want to go north of Canal, but oh, their mother-in-law lives over here. So we're going to kind of draw this so we're not too close to the mother-in-law. You can literally start and stop clicking everywhere you want to draw a shape. And you can draw up to 10 shapes on your map. If you also wanted to kind of check out um, the lot sizes, is it a larger lot, smaller lot? Remember, you can always zoom in. Another thing I did not know, maybe they're looking for a little frontage. Um, you can always zoom in. Now, when you're looking at parcels, you kind of have to zoom in quite close. But if you go to this, it kind of looks like three papers stacked on top of each other. You can click on that and you can say, OK, we want to see the parcel lines to see how big these lots are. By the way, even if it's not listed, one of the cool things is you can see the parcel lines and it will highlight what the frontage is. So it's got 121 um, feet of frontage here by 66 um, here. So it's actually going to show you the lot lines and how big that area is. So these are all important things when you're working with that buyer and you wanna make sure that you're finding exactly what they're telling you they're looking for. You don't want them to get a bunch of stuff that they didn't want. Also remember that if you are selling in a bigger area, the last thing you wanna to have to do is drive two hours away to kind of preview a sub. So remember that little yellow man that's over here to the right, if you are looking at a particular home, you can drag that little yellow Google man onto your map. You can see the property to the left, the property to the right, and you can actually tour the neighborhood. So if I wanted to see, and I believe our subject property is right over here, here's our subject property. It's got that little flag right in front of it. Maybe this is the house that we're going to see. I can see the neighbor to the left. I can see the neighbor to the right. And I can see that this, in fact, is the subject property. Okay. So hopefully that helps a little bit too. 
So now you're probably thinking, okay, well, um, so we, you know, we've covered our buyer's area. We've put in our criteria. Every once in a while I get this far and I'm like, Colleen, you didn't put in leases or you didn't put in the price range. And look at all these that you got. You can always jump back and forth. So I can go into criteria. I can add additional criteria. If I don't have anything to show them, maybe I want to take out some criteria. But once um, I've got my map here, I can jump into criteria or I can just hit my run search. I can see right now I have 12 active properties. Now, I'm going to be honest, a lot of times I like to customize this spreadsheet a little bit. Um, so don't be afraid to customize this spreadsheet so it works best for you. I tell people all the time, it's like an Excel spreadsheet. If you want to sort by something, like if I want to sort by active status, I can actually click on status. And if it was pending or close, it would sort them that way. If there is a field like maybe you want to know how much above ground square footage there is in the home. I can actually drag that field over to the left and it's actually going to remember where I put that. So it will save that in my preferences. One of the things I like to do, um, just because I've been doing this 22 years, I know a lot of the agents in my area. I like to also have the agent name displayed in my search results. So you can actually go to customize and put listing agent name in there so that anytime I'm looking at that, uh, those properties that I'm about to show, I can see who has it listed very easily right on my spreadsheet view. So those are all cool things that you can do too. But lastly, how do you turn on the Collab Center? So I've got all the properties that I want to go to this buyer, but how do I get them now to go directly to the buyer? And it's really just saving your search. By the way, one more tip here, did you know you can text any listings by simply checking off the listing, going to the share button and hitting the text option? You can actually send them right to their phone. A lot of people don't know that, it seems as well. So now I've got my search results. I'm going to check them off and I'm gonna go up to the save button. Here is the most important thing. If you remember nothing else, please remember it's save search as because really this is the part where you're saving your search and marrying it to your contact record. That's really the hardest part of the Collab Center, creating your search, marrying it to the contact record. So I am going to call this um, Cindy Search. Now I wanna turn it on so it goes to Cindy's information. So if Cindy's already in Paragon, I could simply click on the contact record and assign it. But in this case, I'm going to add a brand new person. So I am going to say, I'm going to put in Cindy's first name, last name. And then, of course, I would add in her email address. But for the sake of our demonstration today, I will be adding in me. OK, and I'm going to hit save. Okay, so we've just done exactly what we wanted to do. There's one more step to get it turned on. We have got our name of our search. We've got who the search is going to. The last step is simply save that information and notify Cindy about this great tool, the Collab Center. But what if Cindy, we'll use a couple different examples. I'm a big example person. I have a nine-year-old, so we role play all the time. So we love examples in our house. But what if Cindy is working with an investor and he's looking for properties all over the UP? He might be getting you know, a, a, a notification every minute or every day, or maybe he calls Cindy and says, you know, I got five of these yesterday. It's kind of annoying. Can you just send them to me on Monday morning at 9 a.m.? And the answer is absolutely. You can go into options, and you can say, okay, for the client, I want them to get it reoccurring. And I want them to get it once a week, daily, on Monday. Um, and I want it to be at 9 a.m. So weekly, Monday, 9 a.m. Maybe you'd like to get a report once a week of everything that got sent to this client. Instead of you getting it immediately, you could do a recurring uh, report for yourself. Um, when they're set up, 
you can also notify a spouse or a secondary person. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second too. But you can actually modify the frequency of those notifications in the Collab Center, okay? The next thing you wanna do is you wanna be able to just go in and send a welcome because they need to know what the Collab Center is. By the way, I have had great luck of getting people off of Zillow and off of Redfin and off of these other IDX sites by doing just this. In the, when I have the conversation with them, I, it usually only takes one or two properties for them to figure out, you know, oh, it says it's active. Why didn't you send me 123 Main Street, Colleen? And you know, they're always kind of offended at you, right? Like you're the bad guy. And I say, well, actually I just looked up in the MLS, it closed 30 days ago. I know it's still showing active on Zillow, but you know, here's why there could be a host of different reasons. A lot of times it's because they were claimed and it's broken the sync between the MLS, but long story short, um, instead, I tell them, let me set you up with the MLS. It's the tool we use as agents. And that's exactly what the Collab Center is. It is the back of the MLS. It's the client facing version. If you mark something pending within 15 seconds, your clients can see it's pending. So it's never out of sync like a lot of these IDX sites are that use feeds that can be very delayed. Um, so in your welcome, there's an automated message. You can put your own in there though. If you go into your preferences, there's a spot where you can write your own message. And that's exactly what I've done. I've put, hey, this is the tool that we discussed. This is the MLS that I use. Um, if you have any questions, please give me a call. But I have a whole message that goes out to them. And you can hit preview and you can see it as well. Um, then once you send that welcome message, so I'm just going to send what's here, that collaboration center site is now set up. When you want to, um, let's say you wanted to add that, that spouse or that um, uh, other investor. You can always go into contact information here, and I can add in a secondary name, so Josh McGeggy, and I can put Josh McGeggy is to receive those notifications or if they're going to be primary. If they've purchased, now I don't want to delete the contact, right? I still want to send them my mailers. I still want to keep them in my contact records, but after they purchased, I now wanna make them inactive. So they're not getting those notifications any longer, but I still keep their contact record. Under the collab search options, remember how I told you that you can preview them first? Um, so this went back to, I forgot exactly who asked that question. Hold on one second. Um, it was, Bear with me for just one second. There was a question that was asked that said, um, how do we set it up so we can choose the property? So thank you, Jeff, for your really, really good question. So we showed the approval part, um, but and thank you, I saw it just, just as you said that. Um, so we showed the approval part, but if you want to turn on that preview in order to make it happen that way, you're gonna go to this area right here under their contact information and you're gonna click agent preview. Then once you save the agent preview, that's what turns on that approval process. So that's how you see it right here. So if you want to be able to approve them here, all you're doing is when you're setting up their search, you're turning that agent preview on here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It does have some limited CRM ability too. Um, if you, uh, my son goes to a little uh, Catholic school over here. And so I set up a group for Jake's school. So I can keep track of, I do a lot of fundraisers and stuff there. And I always hand out the little water bottles and all the little, you know, races and basketball games with my card on it. So I want to keep track of how many people are coming from that. So you can actually set up different groups where you can assign this person as someone who came in from that group. So when you're getting ready to do your postcard mailers or your Christmas cards, you can actually create labels right from your groups too, which I think is very helpful. Okay, agent recommended. Again, if you have a situation where you really get the feeling um, that they are going to like a particular home, maybe it's not exactly um, you know, what you, what they said they wanted, they're, they're looking in one city, but you happen to know that they would love this home you just saw. That's what the agent recommended is. So I'm just going to do save here. 
agent recommended is where you can put in other listings for them to see. Um, agent recommended also will allow you to go in and basically all you're doing for your agent recommended is you're clicking on adding a listing. You're putting in the listing ID of what you're about to recommend and now it pops up in their site as something that they want to view because um, the uh, agent recommended will pop up and it will show them this is a, a particular home that your agent has recommended you view even if it's not exactly what you set up in their site the other thing is a client that you're setting up in here you you don't want the client to have three different sites right because that'd be really confusing you know where did i see this house where did i see that house so instead of adding the client in three times you can only add a client in once with that email address. However, you can still add three or four different searches. So maybe this is where I want to add that other vacant land search. I can do that. I can hit add new search and what they're looking for. So you can have multiple searches, just want to do them underneath the client so that they're going to one place to see everything. Um, again, if you get challenging buyers, um, maybe they call uh, Jeff and they say, hey, Jeff, you know that house that you sent me two weeks ago with the little black shutters on the outside and Jeff's like, oh my gosh. You can go into your message history and you can see everything that was sent to that client by date. So you can always open up something that was sent um, and go back and review it. Uh, seller side activity, this is new. This is something they just added this year. And this is if you are also listing their home. So not only are they using you as a buy side agent, but you also want to show them if someone in their neighborhood maybe reduced the price or if someone in that neighborhood uh, just listed their home, what their competition is. There is a seller activity portion where you can say, OK, I have this property listed. So here's my listing on Cove. I want this client to see all the changes. So I'm going to enable the sell side and it's going to send them a welcome that says, hey, uh, Joe Schmigeg on the corner, he listed his house today or drop the price. So it's actually looking in their radius and finding changes within the MLS that it will email to them. So there's some cool things even on the sell side. All right. So by now you're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, how am I going to remember all of this? <laughs> Well, don't worry, I recorded this class so you can go back and see it whenever you're ready. So if you don't you know, set up a prospect right away and you wanna go back a month from now and you wanna see how do I do that agent uh, recommended or how do I do that agent preview, um, you can always go back to the class and fast forward to exactly where you need to go. So where you find these recordings, um, you find them at our YouTube channel, which is My Real Source Media. My Real Source Media, I set up a UPAR playlist, which is all of the classes that we've done up to now. Um, so if you have a question about Cloud CMA, if you have a question about HomeSnap, if you have a question about any of the classes that we've taught, you're going to go to View Your Playlist for UPAR, and it will show you, and you can actually fast forward directly to the portion you need if you want to know more about the new fields and features class um, if you want to know about the advanced paragon class if you want to know about uh, cloud cma uh, the lead generation class that we did they're all right here within your um, mls playlist so again if you're looking for it it is i think we've put it on your home page as well if i remember correctly um, but it is simply youtube.com forward slash my real source media. All right, now is a great time if you have any questions to plug them into the questions box. Um, hopefully I've answered um, most of the questions. Let me just peruse it and make sure I didn't miss anybody. I always hate that. Where is the printed welcome letter that explains how the client uses the Cloud Center? Oh, great question. Okay, so the one that's out of the box, and again, you can customize it, um, that is going to be found in Paragon. I'm going to close these so it's not so distracting here. In Paragon, there is something called preferences. 
So one of the questions that came in was, how do I customize that welcome email? How do I know what it says when it's welcoming them into the Collab Center so they know it's the MLS, um, not like another third-party site? And the answer is right under your preferences, there is, let me close my GoToWebinar box here so I can show it to you better. Um, right under your preferences, there is under the word system, and hopefully your um, GoToWebinar box is not covering it, but there is something called the Collab Center Preferences Wizard. This literally walks you through setting up all of your preferences. So um, and I'll kind of take it through real quick. If you hit start, it will basically show you what your name is going to uh, appear as, what your cell phone appears as, if you have social media links that you want them to see, if you're trying to drive more traffic to your Facebook business page or your company website, anything like that. It's also going to show you what photo. Now, most of this is pulled over from your Paragon preferences. But the second page, uh, I'm sorry, the third page that you see right here. It says, welcome to my, this is where you can actually go in and edit the welcome message that comes to them. Um, so again, if you go right into the, um, it starts off with agent information. The next one is that welcome message. This is also where you can add more links that show up, like your social media links you can put on there. Um, the numbers that you want displayed on your collab center when it gets set up. All of that is done right through your preferences and the Collab Center Preferences Wizard. And that will walk you through. A lot of that's taken from Paragon um, and the Paragon Wizard that's right above it. However, if you want to customize it and, and especially that welcome message, I do recommend customizing that so they know what the Collab Center is. It does tell them, but I like to tell them it's the actual MLS. I'm setting you up an account like an agent. Um, that gets them to use it versus what they think they're seeing on Zillow and many other sites. All right, so I don't see any other questions. Um, so I just wanna thank you for attending the class today. Um, there will be a quick follow-up survey. It takes less than uh, a minute to complete, um, but if you just let us know what you thought of the class, if there's anything you think we could do better, or anything we could cover. I know it's a lot, um, but again, there is the recording that you can go back to, and uh, hopefully you'll start using the Collab Center and, uh, and pick up a few sales because you have a lot more data. All right, so thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time. Have a great weekend.